Hello and welcome to episode 28 of the Geek Heart Games podcast. I am your host, Cody Tietrich, alongside my friend, Sam Suvak. Sam, how's it going? It's going all right. How are you doing, Cody? I'm pretty good. You have a really colorful blanket behind you, I just noticed. Yeah, so here's the thing. So this this chair is kind of like mesh, right? And so uh -huh. I'd noticed that Aloy, when she was sitting on it, I feel like sometimes she would be digging her claws into it. And I'm like, mm, this is not okay. Because like I'd sit and like, like oh, I'd hear God. stitches Dude. like popping Dude. maybe. And I'm like, mm -mm. so now when I get out of the chair, I have to like put the blanket down just to make sure that she doesn't Smart. like scratch up this chair. So that's, that's why it's there. There's the cat. There's her blanket. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you I mean, gotta smart thinking. Well, you know, yeah, I guess. I mean, maybe a smart person would like train the cat to not do such things, but I mean, I haven't I mean, had a ton of luck. Cats are creatures of chaos, and they're gonna do whatever they want. So it's true. Can you really train them? Like, well, apparently, I've trained her just from doing like the once a month where you put the flea ointment on her back. Um, mm -hmm she flips out and hates that and so like now every morning like when i'm getting ready to go to work like i cannot pet her right before i go to work she like freaks out and runs away because once a month she gets a thing on her back right before i go to work so like uh... she's been trained to know about that um although this time this month i tricked her I was like, oh, it's it's the evening. It's afternoon. She's not going to know what hit her. Oh, my God. We got into a wrestling match. Like, from now on, I have to, like, practically sit on her to, like, put it put it on her. Because she just, like, <laughs> goes... I don't know why she hates it so much. So, it's it's an ordeal. But, you know, you do what you got to do. Yeah, you don't want her to get fleas, so... I do not. And I specifically don't want me to get fleas. So, it's imperative that she not bring them in. So... That's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. All right, Sam, well, let's talk about some video games. So you played a new one that we've both been looking forward to, but you've gotten the most hands-on with it. So why don't you tell me about Strange Brigade? Okay, so we'd seen this one a while back, and it looked really cool because it's a shooter, and it can be a co-op, and it's set in, like, 1930s Egypt, and you're treasure hunters fighting, like, mummies and skeletons and stuff, and it has this real, like fun british narrator who it's just like it seemed like it'd be a lot of fun but it came out like just a couple weeks ago and it was like a real awkward time because like divinity original uh, original sin 2 was coming out and then followed the next week by destiny 2 forsaken and then followed by spider-man and so it's like all these games are coming and i was like i don't i don't know if i should get this because it just seems like well, and also, when I first saw the trailers, I was like, this is probably going to be like a $40 game. I think that's that's going to be fine. Turns out it's a $50 game. So I was like, yeah. oh, you know, I'm like, I don't know. What should I do? And like, it looks fun, but is it really going to be fun? And like, do I want to spend that money and then find out that it's not as fun as I thought it was going to be? But then what happened was last weekend was Labor Day weekend. And, you know, I was complaining because, like, I didn't have any fun new games to play. And I really wanted a fun new game to play over the long weekend. So I finally mm -hmm. was just like, you know what? If it sucks, it sucks. But I'm just going to go ahead and get it because I want something to play. And I am so glad that I did get this game and that I got it when I did. Um, I had a ton of fun with it. So I haven't done any of the co-op yet. I've just been playing single player. But it's I'm having a blast. So although first thing, the thing that I was kind of worried about, I'm like, you know, it's a shooter, but what if I don't like the way the shooting is? You know, because, like, I'm used to Destiny, yeah. and the shooting feels great in Destiny. So I start out playing Strange Brigade, and I'm like, oh, hell, this shooting's this shooting's not fun. It's not like Destiny at all. It has <laughs> little to no aim assist, I would say. And it's just like, man, you're just, like, spraying and praying, as they say. Um, so you, you, there's four characters you can choose to play as, and you get two guns for each, um, and then a grenade and then a special ability. And so I had just like a regular pistol with unlimited ammo. And then I had a, like an assault rifle machine gun. 
Um, and like I was paranoid at first. I was like, I don't want to use my assault rifle because I don't want to run out of bullets. So I was trying to like use my pistol and it like takes me forever to like get my aim on someone before I could shoot him. And then it takes like three or four shots to get a, a skeleton down. Um, but like it was still fun. Um, mm-hmm. this, this narrator guy, he really makes it really fun. Uh, he's kind of snarky. Um, I'll get into more about him later, but anyway, uh, I eventually got switched over to like a, more of a hunting rifle where it's just one shot and then it automatically reloads. Um, and mm-hmm. so like, but it's super powerful. So it might take me a little bit longer to get my aim, but usually like one shot will to kill will kill the simple skeletons. So I'm like, this is this is my gun. Like I found the one that works for me. So like I really started enjoying that. Um and so you go with like there's some enemies doing around doing stuff, uh, but then usually you get to an area and you'll you can explore it first and then you'll trigger something and that's when like a horde of enemies comes and you just have to like kill all of them before you can progress. And pretty much, like, almost every time the horde gets triggered and, like, all these things come at me, I start freaking out and I'm like, this is too much. Like, there's no way I'm going to be able to survive this. This is horrible. I'm not going to make it. And then, like, every time I find a way to make it. Um, Because you you have an awesome uh, combat role to help you dodge stuff, too. So that comes in super handy. Um, But, yeah, it's it's been a blast. You've you've got... um, I am playing as... I forgot to write down her name, but she's kind of, uh, she's like an African tribal woman, like Mm -hmm. maybe into some type of tribal magic. Um, and so her super ability is she just like kind of does this like big, like explosion around her and kind of clears the area around her, which I think is the best one. Uh, To be fair, I've only played as one other character and his was like, he launches like a, a volley of scarab beetles to attack enemies, but you kind of have to have directional control on that, which when you're in a panic and need to use your super, I'm not good at aiming (laughs) that. So, so he was a no go. There's one where you can like, I guess you grab an enemy and like wrap them up in a mummy and then like throw them at other enemies and they explode, which I haven't tried (laughs) that one yet. And then I don't remember what the fourth character's ultimate is. Um, But yeah, so my I've found that like pretty much you're never going to run out of ammo. Like that was a, a needless worry for me because there are always uh, unlimited ammo stashes where you can just go and pick up more ammo. Um, mm-hmm. As you're killing enemies, you get gold and there will be these chests where you can go buy to open the chest and there will be a weapon in there. And so you can get like a like a sh- scatter shotgun. You can get like a sniper rifle. Um just different types of guns that are pretty cool. They've got a certain amount of ammo and that ammo doesn't ever refill. So you've just got the gun Uh for as long as that ammo lasts. And then, I mean, that chest is still there. So like you bought your gun and you got it and use it, then you can go back and buy another one. So if you're in the middle of a battle, you can always go back and, and what I like to do, here's the trick you guys. So before the battle starts, you go, you buy your gun, you get it out then you go ahead and you buy another gun to get the chest open. So then the gun's ready there waiting for you. So then you just have to like pick up the gun. You don't have to like go through buying and open the chest again. Um, Fun fact, when you're at the ammo stop filling up your ammo, you are briefly invincible. So like if if everyone's chasing you and you're like, I need ammo. So you stop and get it and like they can't, they don't hurt you while you're getting your ammo. So that's great. Um... I've had a lot of trouble finding health potions because those are the only ways to get your health back. Um, sometimes I feel like they're there and I just don't see them very well because, you know, my eyesight and I'm so far from the TV. It's just like, eh. um, yeah. but so you've got your health bar, which is like this half circle in blue. And then you've got like this little section in red. And like when you get into the red, you're like in the serious danger zone and like if you get attacked there, like it'll go down a little bit and like that red bar will refill. So just a little bit, but then it'll never automatically refill after that. Um, turns out you get a trophy for spending 20 minutes at very low health. Got that one pretty quick. Um, cause I spend a lot of time at very low health, but the cool thing about this game is like, even though I'm in that red zone for like a very long time, like I don't, 
die. Like I've only died once or twice and it was just from boss fights. But like just even with the the horde, as long as you're like dodging and running away and like resetting yourself, uh, you can survive with very little health. So that's cool. Um, there are tons of environmental traps that you can trigger to help you take stuff out. Like you shoot something, this thing comes up and like these like propeller blades chop people yeah. up. There's fire traps you can do. I set myself on fire sometimes a lot. It happens. Um, <laughs> oh, and then there's puzzles too. And so like there's lots of hidden crypts where you have to like find a secret code to unlock the door or you'll find a room where it's like it's got these panels and you know how like there's those puzzles where it's like pipe pieces and you have to turn the pipes yeah. the right way to get the thing to go from point a to point b those ones are super easy i'm super into those puzzles because i can always get those just fine <laughs> um i like that they have puzzles like that that are kind of easy because then i feel like i'm doing a good job there are definitely some that like i just can't figure out and I've missed so much stuff um, because like I never found where like the code was to open the room or something so there's a lot more like in-depth investigating you can do that I just haven't done um, there's there are these collectibles that are little cat statues and it took me way too long to figure this out but like sometimes I'd be walking in an area and I'd hear this cat go meow and I'm like what's that noise why is there like cat noises like in this this game I don't know but it turns out when you're close to a cat statue you'll hear the little cat yell so that's like your warning like oh let me stop and look around and find where the cat statue is so I was I've been doing a lot better getting those cat statues once I figured that out um so that was cool um the narrator says like real snarky things about these cats sometimes I don't I, I was gonna write some of this down I forgot some of his good one-liners um but yeah, he's got he's got some fun sarcasm and like he'll give you hints sometimes. It's like I, there was this one thing where I was trying to get this like I you have to stand on a thing to light up a thing and do whatever to get this this way open. Um, but like as soon as you get off the thing, it goes back up. So you need something to like hold it down, you know, that kind of puzzle mechanic. And like I couldn't yeah. figure out what to do. And he starts talking. He's like, heavens above. I don't know how you'll ever figure this out heavens above and i look above me and like that's the thing that i need to shoot i was like oh thank you narrator dude that was really cool um and then like, there's this your lady at home base who talks to you sometimes on the radio she was talking to me one time and she's like yes you need to be careful they have these deviously hidden traps that you'll probably never be able to see and like at the same time like right next to you there are these huge like axes swinging on the on the ground that are like a big trap and it's like yeah those hidden traps um but it's just got so much so, personality go ahead uh so are you playing just the horde mode uh, or are you doing the story no i've been doing the story um okay. and i've been having a lot of fun with it uh, I did try the horde mode once just to see what it was like and that was again as soon as that started i was like Dude, this is too many enemies. Like, there's no way I'm going to be able to get through this. I managed to get to wave six of horde mode. And this nice. one's cool. Like, there's, like, after you get enough, because you start out, you start out with just your pistol and I think a grenade. Uh -huh. And then you have to get gold through the first round. And then between rounds, there's a chest where you can buy weapons. And so you can get your secondary weapon. And then later you can get the heavier weapons. Um, so it's like killing floor two in a way yeah yes pretty much um there's also like there was this room that you could unlock and so i saved up my money to go see what was in there and it had a couple chests with i don't know what was in the chests uh but then it had three healing potions and i was like thank god oh, so like i'd get injured and i'd like run in there and grab my healing potion um and those things would refresh so i could keep running in there um i was Gosh. Uh, it was real tough in that sixth wave. I was like, I don't know, a couple times in the horde mode, I was like, I think I'm just going to quit. This is too much. But then I was like, well, let's just see how far I can go. And I was like, I, there were a lot of big boss enemy type, not full bosses, mini bosses that were um, in that sixth wave. And like, I just kind of, I feel like reached a turning point where I'm like, okay, I think I'm going to be able to beat this wave. Cody, do you know what happened? What happened? If you, if you know me, you could probably guess that just when I thought I had it all worked out, did a combat roll, rolled off the edge of the map, 
died. I didn't even know you could walk off the edge of the map and die in this game because the story mode doesn't let you do that. Uh, but apparently... Same, you have uh, <laughs> impeccable spatial awareness. I know. Well, I mean, I don't think it's fair for the story mode to like have set boundaries where it doesn't let you roll off things that you're not supposed to. And then all of a sudden, in horde mode, you can like roll off an edge. It's like, what? So I, I lost my life in the in the sixth wave, and I was just like, man, I was I was doing really good. So I was pretty disappointed in that. But all right. But anyway, did you choose to go into the horde mode by yourself, or was there like a multiplayer option? Uh, like you could have queued with random people. I feel like you probably could have queued with random people, but I you just wanted to be a antisocial person. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, you can set up your story mode, too, to let people come join your game. But I was like, no, I don't want to, really. Um, And, you know, because I thought, like, we talked about, like, this would be a fun game to play together. And I do think that it would Mm be. But I'm having a lot of fun playing by myself. And, like, I feel like even if, like, you get it, I'll probably still want to, like, finish it by myself. Just because. Okay. All right. Whatever, man. Whatever. I'll play it again with you if you get it. But, like. I can, like, take things at my own pace, and, like, if it takes me a while to figure something out, like, I don't feel stupid, you know? Because, like, you f- don't cry. Like, do you, don't you ever feel like you're pressured if you're with somebody else, and you're like, oh, I need to figure this out, and, like, you know, we need to get this done, whereas if you're by yourself, it can take you, like, 20 minutes, and you're like, this is okay, I'm just me, like, exploring everything, yeah, and, like, do, you know? So I'm like, you know, I'm fine with that, and uh, so, yeah. It's it's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. I am so glad that I got it and played it before Forsaken and Spider Man because like all this stuff that's happening, getting all hyped for that. I'm like, I, yeah. it's gonna be hard to go back to it, but like I I love it and I'm having a great time. So I'm definitely going to go back to it. But like I, if I'd had that those games first, like I don't know if I would have made the investment to even buy it. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's definitely a lot of fun and I highly recommend it. And the shooting, I mean, you get used to it. You find the gun that's good for you. And you work on getting your aim better, and it's fine. So, <laughs> all right, that's good. I'm glad you're having fun. Yeah, so that was Strange Brigade. Yeah, it's uh fifty dollars. So fifty dollars. A, a little bit cheaper than a regularly priced game. Yeah, pretty fun. It was fun. All right, we should really just title this episode "Geek Heart Destiny" because we're about to get into the meat and potatoes. Uh, well. Do you know what? I actually, I've already decided what the name of this episode is going to be. Um, oh, what is it? It's going to be 4K. So. Yeah. A woman after my own heart. All yep. right. Yep. Oh. So, yeah, this past Tuesday, uh, Destiny Forsaken has dropped. We've played the story. Um, I have finished the campaign. Sam, you're wow. still playing through it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I went pretty hardcore. <laughs> That's what she said? Oh. Uh, Okay, you know what, you know what. Um, Kate so would have liked that uh, joke. Kate would have liked that joke, yes. Um, I think we're going to do non-spoiler stuff, and then we'll get into some spoilers, just very light ones, nothing too heavy. We'll probably do like a, in a couple of weeks, we'll sit down and be like, okay, yeah. like, what do we overall think about it? Mm-hmm. Um, so Sam, what were your, well, you just talked a bunch. Yeah, I'm I just talk. talked a bunch. Talk. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... I have been super excited for this. Like, I was like, this is it. Like, this is like, we're going to have stuff to do all the time. I wasn't ready for stuff to do all the time, apparently, (laughs) because there is a lot. And I'm not complaining. I'm happy. Like, I'm glad it's not like I'm at the end of day one. And I'm like, well, I guess I got to wait till next week for a reset. Mm Because now I'm done. I'm glad, like, I have not even scratched the surface of what's to do in this game yet. Um. I think the story they told is really good. Um, I think it is. It's a revenge tale, but it also has some deeper meanings towards the end. And I, I'm looking forward to when you get there, Sam, because you're going to be like, what? Um, <laughs> it's. I don't think it's my favorite story so far. I think I really liked the story of base destiny 2 and then like Mm -hmm. rise of iron for destiny 1 was like the story i came into and like so that was like the pinnacle for me um but it is a very good story um like it's only been out three days and like when we're recording this and it is so worth 
the forty dollars. Like it's amazing. It's worth, uh, it's worth the eighty dollars if you buy it on two platforms. Just saying. Yeah, you, I mean, yeah, if you do that, Sam. If you're a crazy person. Um, <laughs> so what did you what did you think, Sam? Overall. Oh my god! I was like, oh, I've I've fallen in love with Destiny again. We had a we had a one week <laughs> kind of you know we had a, we had a we had a disagreement. We weren't seeing eye to eye, um, but yeah, it it totally brought me back and reminded me why I love this so much. And to be fair though, that disagreement I've kind of started to echo some of your stuff. Yeah. Although now I'm just like I made a decision today. I just don't care about year one guns anymore. I'm just going to worry about my year two stuff. Yeah. It doesn't take as much infusion cost. Because, yeah. yes, yeah, so, like, I wasn't expecting, like, Masterwork cores to be included in that. Yeah. And those were hard to come by even, like, year one of Destiny 2. Um, although there is a thing you unlock towards the end of the story that lets you start getting those more often um i feel like i don't i don't know how many i had before like i feel like i had just enough to do i could have done a master work before the update um so -hmm. is that like 10 maybe for like a weapon yeah that's what it was okay um and you you only got like between one and three if you dismantle a master work weapon so okay well, maybe I've been, yeah. I don't know what I've been doing, but I had like over 40 masterwork cores. So I've had like a ton yeah, of masterwork I, cores. Um, I had about 90 and I was just like, ooh. Uh, yeah. um, but I, I like was waiting to do infusion until like I got yeah. way further in the story. Cause I it's, like, it's, uh, it's this weird balance because like, you know, you have your stuff like I've got these Karnstein armulets, armlets that when I melee someone, I get a big chunk of health back. And so those are really useful for me when I get myself into a little fix, you know? Um, and so like, I want to level that up, but like, you know, I, I kind of want to get something that's like at least 50 light higher before I do an infusion, just because, I mean, I'm going to keep leveling up until I get to like 500 or so. So I'm still bummed about the resources and the infusion, mm-hmm. I did get really excited because I was visiting someone in the reef and I was able to buy resources from that person. And I was like, fuck yeah. So then I went to some other planets. Like I was just visiting Asher Mir on IO today. I'm like, hey, can I buy some resources? No, can't buy resources from him. So I'm like, I don't know like who, if like some of them you can buy resources and some of them you can't, or if it's just a reef thing. Um, I think it's just the thing with the guy in the reef. Um, and I wonder if his like if his inventory changes. So like one day you can buy the phase glass, and the next day you can buy like the dusk light, whatever. I don't know, maybe. Um, but yeah, when okay. his stuff is there, I'm gonna stock up on resources because fuck resources and fuck the infusion. <laughs> but it's fine. I've oh. been infusing stuff because like I want my stuff to be better. Um, for the record, I played another match of Crucible. I still hate Crucible. That's fine. Um, but like... We'll talk about that because I, I got some stuff. Okay, okay. Um, part of what I like so much about this story is it just seems to have a really strong horror vibe, which I know some of Destiny has kind of been kind of like that before. You're down in like dark, dank caverns and like the 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 thrall from the hive, like those stuff look kind of zombie like and stuff, but there's just something a little bit more about this one. There are new enemies. Um, there are these spider like creatures, which Cody, how do you like those spider like creatures? They're annoying because they explode. <laughs> well, yes. And they're fucking bastards. And they look like spiders. So. That too. But yeah, so those will swarm you like you're in dark areas a lot. There's a lot of like fire stuff going on. I don't know, part of it's probably just the music, too, and just it sets this ambiance that really yeah. gives me a horror vibe, which I, f- I love. I'm having a great time yeah. with that. Um, and then also, there's something about this that kind of makes me think, like, this storyline is, like, the Rogue One of Star Wars, like, this is to Destiny, what that is, because, like, 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 I feel like we're dealing with, like, the seedy underbelly right now. And yeah, like I mean, yeah, we're we are kind of compromising maybe what we might want to do to like help criminals in quotations uh, mm-hmm. to to further our goals to to get our objectives. So like we're not the knight in shining armor that we're we're used to being, and I think that's awesome. I think it's really cool. 
Um, it, there's a, a line, it's one of the last lines said in the story campaign, and I won't say it, um, but after it's said, it makes you rethink everything you have done, and, like, it's really good. Like, it's like, whoa, like, what? Um, My mind is yeah, going it, places, I'm making, I'm making ideas, and I'm getting real excited about what it's, what's happening here. So. Um, it's a, uh, yeah, it's definitely darker. Like it's definitely a darker yeah. tone than yeah. usual. Like, and darker in like like a, like a serious dark way. Like, mm -hmm. cause it's gone dark. Like with the Taken King and like, War Mine was like doing with the Hive and stuff. But like, this is in a serious and darker tone. Like this is the first like, kind of. We'll go, right, I won't go there yet. Almost almost a spoiler out there. We won't do that one yet. Um. But it's more serious tone than what the Destiny kind of universe is used to. Because, like, you know, your ghost is usually there making jokes and stuff. And, like, I honestly don't remember him making any jokes this time around. So it's like, oh, this is different. Um, he <laughs> makes some. I think he made some um, jokes. But, like, it's not, like, constant. Because, like, cause like yeah. in Destiny 2, like, year one, it was quip after quip after quip. Yeah. Like, he was there as a comical relief kind of character. And Ghost is not as much like that. Um, he's definitely right there with you being like, man, this really sucks. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Uh, I love the reef. I think it's really beautiful. I think it's got so many elements to it. Oh, my God. I just because I remember like the first time you go in your ship and you're flying towards the reef and you see what that backdrop is because you always see like the planet you're coming to and yeah. the reef just it's this purple and like all this stuff going on and it looks so gorgeous and then there's like a slightly different scene when you are in your ship and you're leaving the reef and it just it looks so gorgeous like the reef is yeah, my favorite great. place to do ship travel to now because it just looks so great um do you have anything else like non spoilery to talk about? Um, I feel like I'm ready to get into some light spoilers. Light um, spoilers. We're not we're not covering anything story wise outside of like what you what's saw been in, the trailer. in the trailers. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are trying to stick clear of anything and anything, get out of here now. If you have mm -hmm. seen any of the trailers, you're safe. We're moving into spoilers in three, two, one. Holy shit. That moment with Aldrin and Cade was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't know how I was going to react when I first saw it. Because, like, mm -hmm. I've seen it in all the trailers. And, like, you see, like, they released the video last week. It's, like, the last stand of the gunslinger. And you see him, like, fighting off, like, all these bad guys. And you're like, okay, all right. Which would what, you guys say? Go that it. was like the most fucking badass fight ever. Yeah. Cade was kicking ass. He was doing so many cool moves. He killed somebody with his horn. Oh my god, that it was, was amazing. And just like when he would like, he you know he's getting like encumbered by all these guys, and then he just like pops up and he's got his glowing because he's got his his golden gun out, and it just oh he was so amazing. And I guess he did the new super. Is his new super where he can throw knives? Yeah, the throwing, out. the throwing knives. Oh, the, and you just. The blade barrage is what it's called. Okay. Um, but just seeing him name. fighting off wave after wave of enemies, it was so great. Oh my god. Yeah. Which I hadn't seen uh, that that tra I didn't watch yeah. that trailer, so that was my first time to see it, and I was like, oh boy, it's great. Um, but I will say, uh, don't don't take everything for face value that you see in the trailers because they make it seem like certain it's like one of those movie things where like you think a certain character is saying a line mm -hmm. but it's actually a different character oh, and you're okay. like oh shit okay cool um i need to go watch the trailer now and see what that was about well yeah like uh there's a a small like not spoiler thing we'll talk about um in a second uh but yeah like i was like, going into that first mission, I was like, all right, like, you know it's going to happen. But, like, they really do send Kate off in such a way. Like, he goes down a hero. Like, he's doing everything. Yeah. Um, And, like, I thought I was going to be really bothered by Nolan North for pacing Nathan Fillion yeah. for this. But, no, Nolan North did an amazing job. Like, he did. Very good props. That he, 
that like there were moments where I couldn't even tell the difference. Yeah. That's how good he did a job he did. I, I thought about it at the very first scene. I was like, oh, this is where Nolan North is doing it. And then I completely forgot about it for the whole rest of the mission until like way past. It. I was like, oh, yeah, that was somebody else. So he did a really good uh, job. Yes, he did a really good job. Uh, and like, I was just waiting for like ghost in him to interact. But then like your <laughs> ghost is kind of very quiet in that first mission. Yeah. Um, so the scene from the trailer last week that like brought some tears to my eyes uh-huh. and like, I was like, all right, I'm good. I know it's coming up. Like, I know it's, it's good. And then when he's like, Ace, I'm coming home. Oh, and, God. Uh, yeah. There's like a storyline that's been going on in the background of destiny two, where like, if you were doing his, uh, secret caches, if you went and got those every week, you keep finding notes. And he, Cade was writing to his son, K or son, Ace, this entire time and like in the notes he's like it's like one of the last notes you can get if you had done all the caches like through Warmind. it's like i'll be honest with you i don't even know if you're really my son ace but like your name was next to uh me when i woke up so i've been writing to you and like i'm like so in the thing where he's fighting and it's in the trailer and he's like i'm coming home ace i was just like nope nope Nope, just flowing tears. Um, oh, I'm getting choked up. Like I didn't, I never yeah. got any of this. I never knew any of that. Oh my yeah. god, that's amazing. Um, because you would think like he's got the Ace of Spades gun, yeah. so you think like he's talking to the gun, kind of. But like, no, there's a bigger meaning to it, and that's like he's saying he's going home to his son. Um, and like, man, when Aldrin pulls that trigger and like it fades to black. I got super pissed. I was like, mother <laughs> fucker. Um, but yeah, like, and there is stuff that is said between you and Cade, like after the gunshot happens, like mm-hmm. you actually show up um, and like, that's really emotional. And like, I was like, God damn it. You, you yeah. fucking got me, Destiny. Like, good Lord. Um, yeah. And then like the, aftermath of that has been shown in some trailers where you see Ikora and Zavala talking to each other and so you what is what care you put it on your war, uh, warlock yeah so you have a human yeah. female correct yeah. so what was the voice acting like for that for you because I have all exo males and I was like <laughs> well I'm I'm uh, like not 100% on this but I'm pretty sure I just like robots like I like the exos <laughs> okay um, I'm pretty sure that they got the same voice actor from Destiny 1 oh, okay. to do the voice this time for Exodus. That would make sense. And I was like, oh, cool. Because I know Matthew Mercer does the human males, but what was the voice acting like for you? I mean, I don't know. It was a woman. Um, it sounded good. Um, I played good. it again um, on the PC, and I'm an awoken female. And she was a little bit more high pitched. I didn't enjoy her voice as much as my human Uh-oh. warlock. So, um, but yeah, so that was exciting. Like, I mean, I don't remember much of Destiny One, so I don't remember my guardian talking. Um, so this was exciting because, like, for all of Destiny Two, like we've never spoken before, and like yeah. w- once we do, it's like it's really powerful. We're, okay, all right. Well, let's go back because I never watched any of the videos on Twitter. Um, I just read the text that was Ikora saying, you know, every warlock, every titan, every hunter were storming the reef. And I was like, this sounds so badass. We're going to be like just an army attacking the reef. And then it's like, oh, no, that's not what's happening. <laughs> like, no, nope. Zavala, nope, shut that all. down. And I'm like, did the, did the, do all oh. of this, does all the marketing like imply that there's an army going to the reef? Um. Kind of, because like they do, like they use that icor like yeah. quote, a lot That's in like really all the marketing. Funny. Like any promoted tweet on Twitter I see yeah, uh, from Destiny that. is that is those words. I'm it's like, so mm. misleading, <laughs> but that's awesome. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it's Zavala it's really cool. says he, I refuse to bury any more friends, and that's when your guardian speaks up and says, "You won't have to." Aldrin Sov is mine. And I was like, oh my god, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, it's so cool. Yeah. Well, um, and I just also have to say, when you first start the mission, there's this cutscene where you are walking in with Cade to the prison, and I was like, 
damn, I look good. I'm wearing my solstice armor. First time ever I've had like matching armor and made my guardian look good. And I'm like so thankful that like I was looking good for that because like that was like a powerful scene and I was dressed to the nine. So I was like, yeah, that made me feel good about myself. <laughs> Yeah, I was. I like that because, like, I so my solstice gear, I like modeled it after the green Power Ranger. Oh yeah. Um, and so when I landed, I was like, "Fuck yeah, I look good." <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that felt um, good. My PC character has crap ass armor, so she did not look good in that scene. I was like, "Oh, I'm so embarrassed right now." So. Um, so like. It's not even spoilery. It's just something that's like uh, it's said in, in one of the trailers, and you think it's another character. Um, but like one small thing that resonated really well with me was like how they showed people in the tower, like right afterwards. And this is what we'll cut off spoilers. Um, is like so you, after you know, old Jusov is mine, and you leave. Like you're teleported back to the tower. And, like, you can go talk to Tess, and, like, Tess is like, hey, I'm sorry, like, take this to, like, feel better. And, like, this is how you're introduced to the Eververse for season four. And Banshee has, like, a thing on his head, and, like, you walk up to him, and, like, the character of Banshee is really interesting to me because, so, the number after every XO is how many times they've been rebooted, and, like, they're not supposed to reboot re- reboot it past like 10 or 12. Um, <laughs> so like after that, it gets very bad. So like same 14 was like, I think it's not 10 or 12, like maybe 20, I think is the max. So Banshee is Banshee 44. So you can obviously tell that's going bad for him. But like it meant a lot that like, even though he is like, this is supposed to be this old decrepit, like almost like having Alzheimer's. He remembered Cade in this moment. Mm-hmm. And like, he is the one who says from the trailer, like, uh, you gotta promise me something. Uldren Sav put him in the ground, and like I was like, "Fuck yeah, Banshee, I got you!" Yeah. Like I was like, "Damn it, God, it's so cool." Um, so, question like, about these reboots: What does like rebooting an XO mean? Like you just have to like back them up to a point where they didn't crash. So if that's I feel like there's a backup of Cade Six somewhere, and he just needs to get some new body parts, and he's gonna be fine. He just comes back as Cade Seven. I'm like, what? I don't understand the problem here. Well, he's an EXO. The issue is he, uh, his ghost is gone. Yeah. So like that that was like powering him a little bit, and then he was shot. Yeah, he was shot in the chest, so like... Okay, but chest means very little when you're a robot. You can put stuff wherever you want. Good point. So I feel like um, like he just wouldn't remember anything that had happened since his last backup, I feel. But I feel like he could yeah. come back. I mean, he probably could, but like obviously like right now we're, like, you know, well, yeah, we're all 4K. Yeah. Okay, but also uh, my other brilliant theory that I've come up with, um, the Infinite Forest, there's a lot of shit going on in there infinite opportunities infinite copies of people living different existences there's a cade six in there they just pop them out okay it's a new cade six it's a good point it's a very good point i don't know if they'll do that i don't think they will but i briefly considered suggesting that for two guardians i'm like let's bring my warlock back i like playing as her let's just pop her <laughs> out of the infinite forest it'll be fine um <laughs> so Real quick, I just want to talk about, like, this, like, kind of, not character assassination of Zavala, but, like, just this, like, because it happened, it was going on during Warmind. Yeah. I feel like they just don't have a direction for Zavala. Like, they very clearly have a direction for Ikora, and they had a direction for Cade, and, like, it's, it, re- it reached its climax. But, like... That's what she said? Um, why? Because <laughs> Cade would have liked Anyways. that joke. Yes, yeah, good point. Um, the character Zavala has just like lost. Like, yes, he's supposed to be about the city and protecting guardians, protecting the people, and like, but like, this is like your best friend, yeah. and he was just murdered, and you're like, oh no, no, we can't do anything, no, no, and then like he like kind of chastises you for choosing to go out to the reef, like he's kind of like, I wish you wouldn't do that, but I mean, hey, whatever, um. And like, ugh, what if I don't like it? 
what if we get to the end of this thing, the end of Destiny 2? Turns out Zavala has been a scroll this whole time. At this point, I wouldn't be fucking shocked. It's like, <laughs> good lord. Like, I just don't, I don't like it. Um, I mean, you like just, it's, whole, it's like, dramatic storytelling. You have to have someone make yeah. bad decisions in order to let the story be what you want, where we go fight the reef on our own. It's just, you know. Yeah, I guess so. He's taken one for the I team. I also would have really liked if Shax had made comment, and like I'm looking forward to when Lord Saladin shows up again because mm -hmm. he always has a comment on something that's going on in the current thing. So I'm looking forward to see what he says. Yeah. Um, uh, is there anything else story-wise you want to talk about, Sam? I mean, there's one thing that I wanted to say about the Barons, but if am I not allowed to? Because it's like. It's not even like a spoiler. People know the names of the barons, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, like some of them, I'm pretty sure. I just want to say the trickster lives up to her name, and I oh, enjoyed it yeah. very much. It was very yeah. fun. I like that. I so like, far, uh, she's my favorite. Yeah, a lot of the baron fights were really good. Um, yeah. That's they, not like a spoiler, right? Clearly, you're going to fight the baron. Yeah. Like, they we're going to be like, oh, oh. <laughs> no. They give them very unique personalities and like yeah. weird little quirks and stuff that make them very interesting. Some of them anyway. I haven't fought all of them. so. Um, yeah, I have a, quite a few fights that when we can talk later uh, a couple weeks about like full spoilers like I'm going to like rave about because I love them. Yeah. Um, so I did try a Crucible game because uh -huh. we should also say with Forsaken came possibly the funnest weapon of all time the bow yes good it's, lord it's so good and they give you one very quickly they're like hey here you go go have fun fun fact i got mine even sooner after the first mission when oh. you went back to the tower i talked to banshee oh, yeah. traded some stuff in i got a bow i was like fuck yeah let's go try this bad boy out actually nice. to be honest i wasn't excited i was not excited about this bow i was like i'm fine i've got guns i like whatever you know and then i started playing with it i was like holy shit this is fantastic yeah. um the um, aim assist on that bow is like out of this so world so fucking strong like like destiny guns are great regardless but it feels very natural like this thing like i like i can see it sometimes it's like nope it jerks me over so that like it's on the head i'm like okay well, yes let's do that thank you sir <laughs> so it's it's great you feel like such a badass with that bow uh yeah, and so, like, the bow is just really good. And I was like, oh, I wonder how this does in, like, Crucible. Mm -hmm. And, like, that aim assist is still there. Because I was thinking some people in the head and getting... If you hit them twice, uh, with the bow they give you, it's got an explosive tip. Yeah. That's what um, she said. God damn it. I, the second I said it, I was like, uh... <laughs> um, so, if... You hit someone in the head, it explodes, and, like, it's a two-shot in Crucible currently. And, like, that was really fun to use. The issue was my entire team left, so it was just me versus five people. But I will say I put up a fight, and the end score, after ten minutes, was 22 to 14. I felt pretty good about myself. That's awesome! I was fucking destroying those kids. They were, they, they were salty, I'm sure. What kind of assholes leave you to be the only one know. in the match I that's didn't know so what, they didn't up. put anybody in with me and i was like this this is <laughs> what the fuck that's yeah, awesome man. On. you kick some ass it was though. day one i'm sure there were some problems yeah. um, um let me say that's awesome for you but i mean even with the aim assist you got to have more skills than i have because i i took that bow into crucible mm -mm, no it was a no-go no. didn't get any kills so um uh. I'm really looking forward to, I want to get, it's called the Trinity Ghoul, and it's uh, after you get a precision kill, um, the next arrow you shoot will chain lightning Ooh. to enemies around it, and it shoots technically three arrows at one time, so like, if you're not like zoomed down, like you can shoot three arrows and it'll go out like this, and I was just like, ooh, this looks so That's cool. That's cool. Um, so I'm looking forward to that, I want to get that one. Uh, we should say, it's it's not like confirmed but it's being reported that like exotics are not dropping as often lately like no one's like like people are getting them but not as readily as they were before I, yeah i haven't gotten any yeah i yeah but um, i've barely gotten legendary so 
Um, I'm not. I'm uh, not there yet. I'm at like 450 light, I think. So like, one comment on infusion, I will say, is like, so in the it currently with Forsaken, the like hard cap, like just a max, is 600. But like to get there is a grind. The soft cap, which is where like blues will just stop going any higher, um, unless like you're like in like the 550 range, um, is 500. So like I was like I'm not infusing until I get to 500. Yeah. Like it's just so like once I get 500, I infuse like a 505 weapon into the bow mm-hmm. so I can use it because I, I I'm having a blast the bow. Um, I I already infused that bow once because I'm like no I need, I need to keep that bad boy going. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean it's fun. So <laughs> yeah, it's definitely and it's very weird to go back to wearing like all blues for a little yeah. bit. Like I'm starting to get legendaries. Yeah. Um, now. But it's very weird to go back to all blues. Yeah, my days of um, matching and looking good are over until uh, until I can get to a good spot and reinfuse all my solstice gear again. Oh yeah, good point. Um, and then the so I don't know if you've been paying attention to the random rolls on weapons at all. Like no, no. 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 I, I've kind of, um, cause like I know, like in my head, like okay, like kill clip is a good perk to have. Rampage is a good perk to have. Like these weapons, so like if you get a kill mm-hmm. and reload, or just if you get a kill with rampage, like you do more damage. Um, but like I feel like they've added a lot of new perks to guns. Like there's one called range finder. I don't even know what the fuck that did until I looked it up. Like I was like, I don't know what this is. What um, it's do? where if you aim down, if you aim down sights, uh, you get better range. Um, okay. There's a lot of noise happening behind me. I don't know what's happening. Okay. Is it football night again? No, I don't think so. I think someone's just outside my door. Is it a Weird. psycho killer? Um, no, it's probably like my parents or something. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, I I so earlier today I got on just because I was like, oh, I need to turn in like my tokens to like Zavala, and like I had like a thousand. Crucible tokens I've been saving. Dang. Um, and so I was turning in, and I got like seven better devils, and like six of them I think were the same, like st- like same perks on them. So I was like, hey, maybe the random rolls aren't working as that's, well as they should be. That's if I'm not, getting the same. That's horrible. Um, There's no. Excuse well, I mean, it's for that. out of the. Th- I, it's always twenty to level up him. So like out of. I had 1,000 Crucible, so... I do not care. You should not get that many things of the same gun yeah, I like right in one instance. the Better Devils. I like Better Devils is pretty good. Anchor. Do you like it, like, um, for seven freaking guns in your in your inventory? No. Had I gotten, like, a quote-unquote god roll, sure. What's the but god roll? I, had, I don't know. I guess, like, Fast Reload and Rampage, I guess. You don't seem Those to be the perks I want. Stuff. I don't whatever uh, i'm not paying attention to it right now once like i'm sure if i'm higher level <laughs> like i'll be like yeah you know i want a good role in this yeah um i will say like armor rolls are so weird to me because like you get some armor that's like oh rocket launchers and sidearms are the benefits of this armor piece to wear and i'm like <laughs> what if i don't have one of those i don't even use sidearms i use sidearms for like five seconds like what yeah um but yeah Overall, though, I am enjoying it. Um, I think the new social space is really cool. Like, just running around in the reef is nice. Uh, the new heroic, or just the new public events in general are cool. Um, there's two new ones. There's a cryopod, where a cryopod will fall from space. You fight off some waves of enemies, and then a guy will show up. And the way to make that heroic is after he starts like a little electricity field on the ground, the cryopod will start like venting out and if you shoot the vents these orbs of like cryo energy i guess uh will pop out and you can pick them up and after you hit him with three he'll freeze then you just have to capture him like by standing next to him and fight off enemies that's it's pretty, pretty cool. easy one it's, it's it goes pretty yeah. well so it is easier than the ether tank one which is like it took me a while to figure out how to make that one heroic and then i feel like some people just don't care like they just want to get done I haven't um, done with that, that one. one yet. It's only at it's called Four Horn Gulch. It's the first place you land. It's the only place I've seen it like start. It's okay. always the cryopod anywhere else. Okay. Um 
there are servitors that like the scorn are like taking a- a ether from mm-hmm. and when you kill scorn these like globs of ether will fly up in the air and you can shoot them if you shoot all of them and there's three waves so you gotta shoot all the ether that comes out uh it'll make it heroic yeah. and it actually summons a baron that you can fight Ooh. uh so that's pretty cool uh, but i like those um new supers okay so which one did you pick on your warlock i'm on my arc and so i got the the beam. super beam of yeah. death it's kind of like how you like it, it seems like moira's coalescence it just like shoots out um yeah i wish it lasted longer well you, i think with that one you can actually turn it off um, like don't, Cody, you don't want to you, you were supposed to, to say that's what she said. I was setting you up, and you just completely missed it. So I'm it's, sorry. It's fine. I'm so um, sorry. No, that that's interesting. I guess if you can turn it on and off, I don't know how to. Do I that. think you can. I think they've said. I think you just gotta hit it again. Uh, so Weird. you can like if there's nothing around, you can conserve super huh. energy. Well, that's. Um, I'm gonna have to try that out. But I mean, it's okay. It's cool. I mean, it does. It's devastating if you can get a bunch of enemies right there. And it's good for a distance. Nice. Um, okay. I, I was confused by the the solar one because it seems like it's more it's just like healing and buffing like it doesn't seem like it damages enemies yeah. unless I'm reading it it's, wrong. Um, no, no, you're you're correct. It's the solar one for warlock is like a uh, support yeah. uh, super almost like they're kind of gone back to that. Like in Destiny one, that was a thing where like uh, titans with the dome like would give a buff called like weapons of light where like weapons did more damage okay. um i think they've taken that and kind of given it to the warlocks with this because okay. you get like a you get both a healing rift and an empowering rift but it's like huge mm. and like does a lot of, you like pretty much are invincible in it um uh, cool. so i'm sure that'd be good for like night falls and yeah that might be the next one i try to get but what did you get uh, so i chose for sunbreaker which gave me the giant hammer and I was like, I really hope I'm not disappointed. I was not disappointed. Uh, similar thing. I do wish it lasted longer. That's what she said. <laughs> See, okay, feel better. Um, so with that, you get a giant flaming hammer, and you can ground slam. And if you ground slam, you send forward a fire tornado, and it'll keep traveling until it hits something, and then it explodes. Um, this sounds awesome. And if you do your uh r1 or your light attack with the hammer you hit something and if you hit it you like push off of it with enough momentum that you just start spinning to win and you just spin endlessly as long as you keep hitting things and with a boss who has a ton of health you hit it and you keep hitting it and you're just spinning around for the entire duration i cannot wait for games to get that into guardians that's gonna be fantastic i'm super excited nice um and the other like cool part about it is your melee, you get a ranged melee where you actually throw a hammer as if you're Thor, but it's like one of the Sunbreaker hammers, and you can pick go and pick it up. Nice. And like part of the talent tree is if every time you pick it up, you regen health. Oh. So it's really nice for clearing ads, and if you're also taking damage, you pick it up and you start regen health. Like so like nice. if I'm in a pinch, I can throw it on the ground and it like just bounces it back up and picks me up. Um that's really nice. And then, like, there's a stacking buff you get called Roaring Flame, which just makes your fire damage do more. So if you can, like, throw it three mm-hmm. times, kill something each time, like, it's going to do a good chunk of damage that, thir- that fourth cool. time you throw it. Um, I've found out how to get more supers. It seems like it's going to be a nice challenge, though. So once That's... you get there, we'll talk about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Can we talk about how you get your first one, or should that be a surprise? Um, let the be a surprise because okay. it's kind of cool. Let me just, it is pretty cool, but let me just say it took me a really, really long time to figure out that was how I was getting my new super. It's like, I was oh. like, I don't know why it took so long. And then like last night I was playing with Jessica and as soon as something happened, she's like, oh, is this how we get our new super? And I'm like, it took me like two hours after this to figure that out. And I'm like, God, I feel stupid <laughs> right now. So, so yeah, but it's really cool. And it's, it's awesome. I highly recommend getting a new super just because that experience is yeah. different. And like, it's, 
generally seems like a lot of people love the new supers. Like I've been seeing a lot of gameplay of like for the hunter, the uh, blade barrage, the one that mm-hmm. Kade does in the fight. Um, Alejandro was playing with that. And he said he really liked it. Um, the arc Titan one where you're pretty much just like Superman flying around oh, and smashing into people. That's cool. um, I've seen people are in love with that. So it's good that these are getting well received. Um, yeah. Cause I'm sure I was kind of worried. I was like, Oh God, I'm sure someone's going to find something to complain about with this. Um, <laughs> there's a bunch of other changes that came with this, like the introduction of triumphs and collections. Oh yeah. Um, uh, there are some titles like we talked about last week. Um, connected to the triumphs and i think i've found one that i'm going to go for um so hopefully it doesn't doesn't kill me but which i'm gonna one? do it which one <laughs> it's a it's a spoiler no, okay. um, so right. can, can't tell you that one yet okay um cool uh it's, i'm excited like it's there's so much to do yeah and like just when you think there's so much to do they give you more to do <laughs> because like things are just popping out of anywhere like this is not spoilery but if you dismantle something you have a chance of getting a scrapper bounty yeah which is a bounty you get for destroying something and i was like what the fuck is this yeah um it's so like it's interesting. crazy with the bounties like everybody has bounties for you now and last week we were talking about how they had changed the milestones so like you, you once you got your once you finished it like your reward just popped you didn't get ingrams anymore mm-hmm. um and so it's like it's great because you don't have to go to the tower now afterwards but what you don't think about is you have to go to the tower beforehand because now anytime you're going to do something you need to go and pick up your bounties from whoever you need to before you go and do something so it's not actually saving you a trip you just have to do it before rather than after which i say is worse because before you were just going and doing your thing and it was fine now you're like oh i have to remember to do this i'm not going to remember to do this i did a strike today did i remember to go get my bounties first no I was so pissed. Uh, I, mean, I can you don't s- always have to do bounties. But I mean, you might as well. If you're gonna, I mean, if you're yeah. gonna do something, you might as well get these bounties. One small complaint I do have is their change to clan XP. Oh. It is now all tied to bounties. I'm so pissed about that. Garbage. And like, we have a very small clan. Which, if you'd like to join, you can go to Bungie.com and look up Keycard Guardians, and we are awesome. It's Bungie.net, but whatever. What did I say? Bungie.com. Yeah. Bad. Um. Fun. Uh, and so the only way you can get clan XP now, it's not by doing activities like before you had like a, a weekly calf you could get. Uh, now it's you have to do the challenges, which is to do bounties through Hawthorne. And like, I'm just saying Hawthorne's got some shit bounties. Like she it's all like three freaking bounties. Two of them are for Crucible and I hate Crucible. Um, Once you beat the campaign, three okay. weekly bounties also unlock. So are they in Crucible? yeah, the daily ones. Yeah, I think there is one. So I'm just like, no, don't like it. Um, but yeah, I don't. And I, I think they've like people have been on the subreddit complaining about that. So I think they, they've heard that and they're going to work on it. OK, um, I, I don't know. Like, I think like still have like you can do that, like have the bounties, but like still give the 5000 XP yeah. a week because like, for smaller clans like who don't have a lot of people, it's going to be impossible to level up. And yeah. there are triumphs co- connected to that. So like. That's the thing. Yeah. I'm like, I think the first DLC drops in December. So like, we don't have a lot of time to level up. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Um, Also, I'll just say, um, like I said before, like you don't get your Ingrams to go decrypt anymore. So the Cryptarch, whose whole job was to decrypt Ingrams, apparently he doesn't have a real job anymore because there's no Ingrams for him to decrypt. So what he does is he can recycle your shaders are you are you telling yeah. me that I'm making an incorrect statement if I finish the campaign? Yes. Okay. Something something comes up at the end of the campaign. Okay. It, so I guess it he's gives just, him a, it gives him a job. He's so taking a worry. vacation. Rahul is safe. <laughs> Rahul is safe. Don't uh, worry. No, but what's cool? So he will recycle your shaders now. So if you have a bunch of shaders that you don't like, you can recycle them. You get glimmer. Sometimes you get legendary shards. Sometimes you get bright dust, depending on I guess when you got the shader. Um, 
And then also all the shaders that you've ever had are in your collections now. And so if there's one that you liked, but you've used up and you can't get it back, you can just go and buy more of it straight out of your collections, which I think is really cool. Um, one other thing that I'm really upset with, if they were doing all of these freaking updates, I don't know why they couldn't do an update where you can dismantle a stack of things all at once. All of your mods are bad now. Yeah. They're useless. You have to dismantle them. You have to do them one by one. If you have a stack of 17 mods, you have to dismantle that thing 17 times. I'm like, please, God, just just let me disable, dismantle the whole stack. Why, why in all of the updates did you not make that one? That would have made people so happy. So I was pissed about that. I mean, it, it did take a year for us to get to dismantle five shaders at a time. So, yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Trust yeah. me, I went to the vault and I had 300 of like some stupid freaking shader I don't use, and I spent a good 30 minutes just dismantling um, shaders. Oh my god! Um, I haven't really like messed around with the collection thing. Like I don't think that's like I, I like the triumphs over the collection yeah. collecting things. Um, I do think it's cool that like um, I don't know how correct this is, but I have been reading it a lot. Where if you have a gun that you really liked from year one, you can bring it out from the collections and it'll actually be higher light. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Uh, so that's kind of cool. I've seen a bunch of people saying that they've been doing that with like exotics and stuff. So that's I assume worth it would checking work into. Stuff. Yeah. Um, that might be better than just trying to infuse something up. Just get rid of it and then go buy it from the collection. Yeah, because I'm sure pulling something from the collection would just probably cost like glimmer or something no it's probably um, gonna cost resources oh, too because everything costs fucking resources i'd hope they raise the glimmer cap to like a million because seriously like, the cost of everything is so high but um well it's, it's yeah because like you get your cap and then you're not accruing anymore but then like you're just doing a few little things and all of a sudden you're down to like fifty thousand glimmer it's like you it just goes really fast so they really do need to raise that Let's end it by talking about a positive thing before we move on to some news that's connected to this. There's a lost sector. Oh my it's god. <laughs> and it plays fucking the best music. Yes. So Sam had mentioned this to me and I was like, oh, I wonder where it's at. So I was just checking out lost sectors. I was like, whatever, I'll just look into some. So the first one I walk into, you walk through this door. And you just hear, it's a fucking banjo playing. Banjo. You're like, what's going on? Um, and there's all these like uh, fallen in there. It's like a cantina. Just having, like a little. It's the fucking yeah, it's like cantina. A cantina. They're having a good time. The music switches. It plays different kinds of music. Um, and like Ale there's songs with like full on lyrics. Like Aleandro told me that apparently Paul McCartney wrote a song for Destiny One, and yeah, and apparently it was really bad. And that's one of the songs that plays. Um, Okay. So it's really cool. cool. So you, you come up here, you look in the window, you can see all this going in here. You're like, man, this looks so awesome. I want to go check this out. You go over, there's a bouncer at the door. Guess what? He's 480 light. You're not getting yeah. in there until you're leveled up. So I still haven't been in there. Have you actually been in it? Yes. So I okay. actually went through it and like you actually get to mess, like you actually get to change the song. Like after you defeat that room, you change oh, the you song. Do, you have to kill everybody which... in there? Yeah. Oh, I thought, um, we thought maybe you could just hang out and have fun. No, you have to kill everybody. Okay. And then you okay. change the song, and uh -huh. apparently you change it to a song no one likes because more bad guys are running at you, and it's hilarious. <laughs> That's awesome. I can't wait to get in there. So. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, was, I walked around the corner and heard the banjo playing, and I was like, what? <laughs> that was That's awesome. so great. Um, oh, man. But yeah, so Forsaken looking really good i'm mm -hmm. glad to have something to do every time i get in there like just last night i, I was like well i, I want to do something to get some powerful gear i was checking out my daily challenges and it's like hey go do a strike so i was like all right doing a strike whatever mm -hmm. um so a little bit of news that ties into this bungie has announced the bungie rewards program and there's a current offer going so what this is is they're going to offer physical slash digital rewards yeah. for things you do in bungee games i feel like they're going to eventually tie this into other games they're releasing because they are working on other games uh, but right now it's all dusky stuff and maybe what we won't have saying? to pay for these unlike the last time where we had to work really hard to get the privilege to pay our own money to buy a shirt no i believe these are free um all of them? <laughs> hopefully i hopefully. mean if it's like 
get this Cade Sick action figure and pay $6. I'll pay, pay $6 yeah. for an action figure. Yeah, um, that's fair. So the first reward is the uh, digital soundtrack for Forsaken. And boy, is it good. Like, those really songs good. are really nice. It's so good, you um, guys. All Destiny music is good, even that banjo. So you're probably like, well, why would I, like, why does this matter? Like, technically it's free. All you have to do is sign up for the rewards program. Mm -hmm. And if you beat the Forsaken campaign by the end of September, so you have a month, you get the soundtrack for free. Mm -hmm. And if that wasn't good enough, you get two bonus tracks versus paying $10 and buying it from the store. Granted, if you buy it from the store, you get an emblem, whatever. Nobody cares about an emblem. So. But two bonus tracks. Um, I'm not sure what those bonus tracks are. They didn't They're say. Probably the banjo track. If they may be the banjo track, good point. That'd be awesome. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think this is really cool because, yeah. like, I mean, it's, I guess it like if this is like, hey, if you complete the raid uh, by October, the end of October, like, we'll send you a poster. That'd be nice. I would be down for that. That's cool. Um, just you know, I, I th there's a lot to work with here, and it's nice mm -hmm. that like Bungie wants to give back to the community, like. Uh, like they're glad people are stuck with them, so mm -hmm. this is their way of paying us back, and I'm, I'm that's good with me. So yeah, what do I'm you excited think about, about Sam? It. I'm so excited. excited well, because you know I love the Destiny Two soundtrack. Like sometimes yeah. at work, I'll just like sit and listen to it while I'm working. Yeah, because it's nice. Um, I so. I loaded up the uh, Destiny One soundtrack for Rise of Iron like mm -hmm. about a month ago, and I was just like, ah, these were the days. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I think this is really cool. Um, I'm interested to see what they do next with it. Uh, hopefully, it's not like one of those rewards programs where they only do something like twice a year. Because I have joined rewards programs where that's a thing. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think they're starting strong with giving a full soundtrack out. That's really yeah. nice of them. So it's really cool. Good job, Bungie. Also, last week we mentioned some shirts that they brought to PAX. Um, those are actually in the store now. What's up? I also last week we completely forgot <clears throat> something very important for all of you. Um, if you have PS Plus, you can get Destiny 2, the base game, for free right now through the month of September. So it's a great time to get into it. Warning, you're probably gonna like it, and then you're gonna want to buy these DLCs. So, but yeah, you can get into it for and free right now. <clears throat> currently on the PS Store, I don't know if it's ended or it will may have ended by the time you hear this. Uh, but if you if it's still going on, definitely get them. The DLCs are ten dollars each, um, and you do have to own both of those in order to play Forsaken. So if you're like want to get Forsaken, you do need to have those. That's Curse of Osiris and Warmind are the two that you can get for ten dollars each. Yes. Um, because yes. technically Forsaken's a DLC too, so it's kind of misleading. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Next up in news, uh, so Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is going to have some demos in some Best Buys around the country. Oh my god, Cody, Saturday. that's awesome. Let's go do it. Let's go try these out. Let's do it. Yeah, it's going to be great, right? No, sadly not. Um, sadly, there are none near Sam or me. <laughs> so um, it's just, I mean, it sucks. Like, I feel like you could have put it in a couple more, like at least one Best Buy in every state, maybe. maybe. I don't think it would be that hard. Um, I don't think so. Although, I mean, um, it's probably really going to disrupt the store a lot because, like, there's probably going to oh, be, yeah. like, tons of people just coming to play this game. It's going to be chaos. There's, there's going to be some Super Smash Bros. Ultimate tournaments in <laughs> in Best Buy, and they're going to be like, no, guys, like, guys, you're not going to leave. Move like, along. It's enough. But it's cool that we'll they're see. doing this. Yeah, it's really nice. Like, once again, like, last week we talked about it. It's nice when there's a demo mm -hmm. out. Like, yeah. Maybe if there was one around me, if I went and tried it, I'd be like, okay, no, this is not for me, actually. But I don't think that's going to happen. It, no, I'm going to love this game <laughs> And, and so to much. be honest, if there was one by me, I probably still wouldn't go because I don't want to be around all those people. <laughs> so. Good point. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be like some sweaty guy playing it all day, every day. <laughs> no offense to you sweaty people. I'm also a sweaty person. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's really nice with Nintendo. Glad they're doing that. Hopefully, maybe they'll bring it to some other stores uh, eventually. Yeah. Or maybe it'll be something that they do for other games in the future, too. Just to yeah. get some more excitement about him. All right. I think that's it, Sam. I think we're done, right? Not, that was all the news we had. I don't know. I think there's just like... Nothing, nothing big happened for you like one at little, all. One little thing I just want to mention real quick. Um, so THQ Nordic, which has a history of buying IPs that are dead, 
uh, announced that they have bought that well they've bought 38 studios which is the name of the studio uh not as i when i first read i thought they had purchased 38 studios not 36 not 37 38 i'm like that's a lot of studios to purchase no 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 it's the name <laughs> of one studio it's named 38 studios and their claim to fame is they made Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, which, as you know, I love that game. It's It was on my top 25 games of our lives list. Um, so that's really exciting. Who knows what's going to happen? I mean, ideally, they're not going to pay money to buy something and then not do something with it. Um, so it's possible that they'll make just a remaster of it. There's possible that they'll make a whole new game. Apparently before 38 Studios shut down, they'd been working on, um, an MMO version of the game, I guess. So it's possible like they, they'll work on that or something. That's there's, cool. there's no telling what's going to happen. Just there's a possibility out there in the world now, which is really exciting because I mean, once a studio closes, you're like, well, that's the end of that game. We're never going to see anything more from yeah. it. Um, so I'm really excited. I mean, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning was just perfect as is. Like, I just played it not too long ago on Xbox 360, and it held up, and it was fantastic. And, like, I'm not one of those that, like, worries about, like, some something new running something old. Like, it's always going to mm. be its perfect version there. And anything new that we get, it's just going to be exciting and if it's not good then that's like man that's fine i've still got the original that i love but it's just you know we could get something really awesome so i'm excited about that i don't know i remember seeing this pop up on my twitter feed and i was swore i could hear you screaming all the way <laughs> from your house just like yeah well our friend andy uh messaged me about it to let me know because like i hadn't seen it i was you know i was remiss because i wasn't following thq nordic on twitter but i am now because i don't want to miss this kind of important information that happens but yeah thank you for andy to to bring the good news to me it made my day so yeah and like Shout out to TSQ Nordic. I know they get a lot of shit for like uh, constantly buying properties to old <laughs> games, but like, I don't know. I, I think like Darksiders 3 has a lot of hype behind it, and like, they yeah. seem to be doing pretty good, so good for them. And I'm excited about their Bio Mutant game that's coming out at some point, which might be next year, probably now, but who knows? I think, yeah. But I think so. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Um, but yeah, and I mean, maybe they're just like stockpiling all of this, and then like, all of a sudden one year, they're just going to be like, Bam, here's everything you ever wanted. And it'll be fantastic. You never know. Yeah. So I mean, those retro style games, like not retro, but like older series games are mm -hmm. coming back in the style. Like yeah. they're making a comeback. So that's good. Yeah. So good for them. Good for them. Good for us. Good for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think we got time for one quick question. Okay. So let's do it. Our good friend Megs sent in. If you could have any game remastered with today's graphics, what would you choose? And she had mentioned that she was getting her Pokemon game, so she had a different answer. So Sam, what was that answer? Um, she said, I would love a Zelda Oracle of Ages remake. I freaking love that game. I'll be honest I'm, with you. I'm not familiar no with that. No idea what that game is. Yeah, I don't know yeah, what that don't... game is. But we've had this question for a while, so I've had plenty of time where I could have Googled that. But, I mean... Yeah. I mean, you know, um, it seems like it was one of those really old Zelda games, um, <laughs> like before Ocarina of Time. And so it's we just pissed off a bunch of Zelda fans because they're probably like, no, no, it was after it was after <laughs> and Breath of the Wild is the great. I'm sorry, I'm just messing with you. I mean, to be to be fair, there's like a ton of wonderful Zelda games. The only ones I'm familiar with are Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess and Breath of the Wild. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, everything else is like, well, you know, that's, that's great. Good for you guys who like Zelda. <laughs> um, <laughs> this was a bad question to do. We were getting ourselves into trouble here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our friend Byron said Parasite Eve for the PS1. Any idea what this was? We really should have Googled no? at least one of we these games. At least one of these. I mean, we know, I know some of them. I've heard so of hard. Parasite Eve. Um so basically what this game is, um, you're playing as this character Wait, named Wait, time Eve. out real quick. Are you making shit up right now or do you actually know? Well, I mean, why don't you just let me talk and then okay. see what you think, okay? Um, right. So you play as Eve, 
who is this human insect hybrid who happens to be a parasite and it's a side scroller um action adventure so you go and instead of like fighting people basically you're just trying to like get a good jump on them and then like you drain them because you're a parasite and so you need to take their energy to power yourself and the interesting thing the interesting mechanic behind this is that like your life meter like your health doesn't go down like if you get hit by an enemy it doesn't matter you're pretty tough you're fine but like your health meter is just constantly decaying and because because you're a parasite and you need to keep sucking the life out of enemies to power yourself so it's a really intense game um i highly recommend it you guys should check it out what do you what do you think this is this is our new segment called Is It Real or Is It Bullshit? <laughs> um, and I'm going to say it's bullshit. Wouldn't it be awesome, though, if we think it's bullshit, but then it turns out it's right? It could be right. We don't I even know. So. I mean, I could be spot Byron. on. Byron will have Byron to ask and, and find out what this game is actually about. So, all right. Uh, um, Aleandro said, hmm, that's tough. If I could cheat, it would be Goldeneye and Shadow Man, both from the Nintendo 64. Um, I I mean, Goldeneye was a really good game. Did you ever play that one? Yeah. I liked it. Oh, that. hell yeah. Loved yeah. It. That was like a, it was one where I was first getting into kind of shooters and like it was kind of revolutionary for me. Although I played it on Wii, not Nintendo 64. Um, why don't you? I played my brother in that game all the time and he always killed me so yeah, yeah. um uh, shadow man is you tell it you... comics oh tell so, us about oh, that you game tell you. yeah i want you to so tell me about so that in, game so in shadow man you're our shadow man's kind of like a necromancer right oh. so he like can do like he can shoot some purple ray beams from his hands nice. and like that's his range attack but like it's got like a meter and like so if you drain the meter you gotta like let it build back up so then he does attacks with his staff so it's a side scrolling similar to Parasite Eve, right? Yeah, yeah. Um and so you're going through and you're fighting like zombies in a graveyard and like and you're traveling between like the shadow realm Ooh. and fighting demons and like shadow monsters. Um and you're using your staff and your purple ray beams from your hands. Uh and like the ultimate goal is to stop the light man. Defender of the day man. Okay. So sunny. No, I'm, I'm following you. Okay. No, I got it. Um, I mean, so was yeah, it supposed to be fight? funny? A little bit. Okay, um, well, try harder next time. <laughs> wow. Oh. Wow. <laughs> so you get to defeat the light man with your shadow powers and your shadow hand beams. Do you just, like, um, stand in front of the sun in front of him and, like, cast him in shadow? <laughs> yeah, like, you just grow really big. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All I know about Shadow Man is it's based on the Valiant comics. So, Sam, was that real or was it bullshit? Um, that sounds real to me. That sounds like a fantastic game. I think we should check Thank it you. out. So. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. That Parasite Eve game you were telling me about, like, that actually did sound pretty cool. Sounds like, badass, right? <laughs> All right. So, our good friend Mike said he would like to see Castlevania Symphony of the Night remastered with today's graphics. And I think a lot of people would agree with that. That seems like it'd be really yeah. cool. And we don't have to describe that because everybody knows about Castlevania. So... Yeah, yeah, vampires. Yeah. Netflix. Yeah. Warren Ellis. Did he write a Wait. comic? He wrote. Warren Ellis worked on the Castlevania series on Netflix. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. cool. I was like, oh shit. Hey, um, so he's Sam, a man of many uh, talents. What is one game you would have remastered with today's graphics? Do you want to guess what my answer is, Cody? It's a tough one. I'm gonna go with Oregon Trail. Are you serious? Yeah, I was actually kind of serious. Oh, <laughs> really? Which one? Which one are you gonna go? Uh, the only the one that I've said like a million times I want remastered. Which which would be? It starts with a resident and it ends with a four. <laughs> oh, resident with four. Okay, like it's like that's that's pretty modern graphic. Oh my god, it needs a remake. Okay. <laughs> Okay, reasonable. Okay, Those controls? I was thinking like super retro, like when we talk about remakes. No. So, no. Like mine. What's yours? Is Team NT Turtles in Time? Like I think that'd be really good. Like I think that could, that could work. Um, but yeah. well, I think it could work. But then I'm like, I have such a nostalgia for that game yeah. and like it's eight bit stuff. So I'm like, oh, do I really want that remastered? But like, yeah, because it'd just be super fun. 
like I just said, it's the great thing. Like you don't lose the old thing if you get a new thing. It's like maybe the new thing's great. If it's Good not, point. you still got the old thing. So yeah. Good point. Yeah. I'm All full right. of good points. So I think that was a pretty good episode, Sam. I think we got a lot done. We got to rave about some destiny. Your voice got really high right there. I don't know what, why. What it's do you mean? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right. This has been the Geek Heart Games Podcast. If you would like to send us a question, you can send it to contact at geekheartgames.com. We love questions. Isn't that right, Sam? We love them, man. They're great. All right. If you would like to watch our live streams, which we have not done in a while, we'll work on it. I'm sorry. We just streamed uh... Gambit this last weekend. Oh, shit. You're right. We did. We did. Go watch that. I got to upload that. I got to upload that on YouTube. It's my bad. You better hurry. Um... It'll fall off the archive. <laughs> oh, I got to download it. Don't okay. Worry. Okay. okay. Because, we'll get yeah. that uploaded then. All right. So go to twitch.tv slash geekart games. Give us a follow. It's nice. All right. I can't keep doing that. My throat's so right. Um, <laughs> if you would like to see that stream of Gambit, eventually, I'm going to get it uploaded, I swear. Um, go to uh, geekartgames.com slash YouTube, and we greatly appreciate any uh, likes or comments you leave there. And if you could subscribe, it'd be nice. Um, if you would like to support us monetarily, you can go to geekargamescom slash shirts. I'm going to greatly appreciate that. Yeah, appreciate that. Uh, I don't know. I appreciate, appreciate that. Uh, I was doing all the accents tonight, apparently. Um, yeah. If you would like to follow us on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, we are at geekargames.com. On Instagram, we are it's your boy, we are not, Games. We are not at geekargames.com. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been a very long night, guys. Um, Facebook and Twitter at Geekar Games. There you go. On Instagram, it's at it's your boy Geekar Games. Is um, that a real thing? Real. You need, no, well, you I need to set it. that up I've... now. You're in charge of it. You need to set that All up. Right. I got you. <laughs> it's your boy. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we do ask if you enjoy what you're listening to and our wild shenanigans of if is it real or is it bullshit. Um, if you leave a review on iTunes or any podcast service you use, it really helps. It gets the podcast out there to more people. Um, for, real quick, mission for any listeners who want to, write in and just give us the name of a game. It doesn't have to be a real game. Just a name of a game, and we'll tell you what that game's about. Be we'll fun. do it. It'll be a Fire fun segment. I'm real it. excited about it. Okay. So am I forgetting anything? I don't think so. I don't think so either. It's your boy, Geekhart Games. Um, I'm at Combo Cody on Twitter. I am at Sam. SKSUVAK on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, just before we sign off, just want to say thank you guys for listening the past couple episodes. You know, we appreciate it. We've noticed a little bit of rise in the listeners. So yeah. thank you guys for listening. If you've been there since the beginning, we love you even more. Get it together, new people. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you guys rock. We love you. All right, Sam. Take it away. We are just two geeks who heart Cade. And now we would like to have a moment of silence. For Cade. For Cade.